So I've made a video discussing Fallout's largest robots. I've also made a video discussing Fallout's smallest robots. And I've made a video discussing Fallout's largest creatures. You know what this means now, right? It's time to talk about Fallout's smallest creatures. I must note, however, unlike prior videos, I have to add some restrictions. This list will only contain creatures that can be killed by the player character, so no small flies that fly around corpses, or iguanas. And it must be around the same size or smaller than dog meat, including wings and wingspan. So probably not a lot of flying creatures. I've done my best to put them in order of size from largest to smallest, but some of these are pretty hard to compare. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Bark Scorpions Hailing from the deserts of the American Southwest are the notorious Arizona Bark Scorpions. Pre-war these critters could grow up to 8 centimeters or 3-ish inches long. However, following the destruction of the Great War, the Mojave's Bark Scorpions are quite a bit larger. Found throughout the Mojave Wasteland, these arachnids are easily identifiable by their light brown exoskeletons. This grants them a unique ability to blend into the dusty surroundings of the desert, making them adept at ambushes. Coupled with their pack nature, often being found in groups of three or four, encounters with bark scorpions can be quite deadly for any careless wanderers. While bark scorpions are not the largest or most visually imposing creatures in the Fallout universe, those traveling the wastes should always keep at least one eye on the ground. Sometimes it's the smallest of foes that pose the greatest of threats. Rad Rats Moving on from the bark scorpion, the next smallest creature in Fallout is kind of a two-for-one deal. Over the entire span of the Fallout franchise, there have existed mutated rats. In the first two Fallouts, they've gone by the name of Small Rat, in New Vegas the name changed to Giant Rat, and in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, they've now been rebranded to Rad Rat. Regardless of what you call them, these rodents of unusual size are small yet persistent. Descending from their pre-war counterparts, the Common Rat, these rodents have undergone significant mutations following the Great War, growing to a size that rivals your standard dog meat. Matted hair, mottled skin, and extreme rabid nature complement their increased growth. And while these giant rats are hostile, they are also quite weak. Across the entire Fallout franchise, each iteration of rat doesn't come with many hit points. The only challenge that they can potentially pose is when they're found in packs. Their speed and small size can make taking down a horde of rats quite difficult. It is because of this that unsuspecting wastelanders should take some caution when roaming. At the end of the day, they're just dog-sized rats. What are they going to do? Transmit a nasty disease? Well, probably yeah. That does sound quite nasty actually. Rad Roaches Cockroaches are some of the most resilient creatures this earth has seen. Fallout is no different. Except instead of merely surviving a catastrophic nuclear event, the great American cockroach was morphed by it, growing significantly in size. Rad roaches, as they are colloquially known, are cockroaches that have been enlarged by latent radiation following the Great War. They share similar characteristics with their pre-war counterparts. They have a hardened brown exoskeleton and hide a pair of wings on top of their abdomen. And while one might think that their hardiness and ability to fly would make them a threat, they have kept their pre-war pest nature. While rad roaches are aggressive and territorial, they hardly pose any threat to most wastelanders. In fact, due to their prevalence in the wasteland, many wastelanders use rad roaches for sustenance, frying up their carcasses for meat. Now, like other creatures on this list, they only become truly dangerous in numbers. We see a prime example of this during the start of Fallout 3, where many radroaches are capable of taking down Vault 101 security. The radroach is pretty much your standard cockroach, just bigger. Still, they make Fallout's smallest creatures list. Ticks 
This is quite possibly the worst addition to the Fallout series. First appearing in Fallout 76, ticks are a disgusting menace to post-apocalyptic life. To be fair, they're pretty disgusting in real life too. Those who hike frequently or live in heavily wooded areas know what I mean. Ticks are small parasitic arachnids that feed on the blood of mammals and birds. They climb onto you, latch on, and can suck your blood up to hours. It's absolutely disgusting. The worst part is, is that they can transmit Lyme disease, a nasty illness that could lead to death if infection reaches your heart. They're awful. And in Fallout 76, they're no different. Thanks to nuclear fallout, the Exodes scapularis variant of ticks have grown in size, appearing slightly larger than a cat. These irradiated bloodsuckers continue to drain the life force from their foes. After a melee attack, the blood sacs of these ticks engorge, becoming full. But instead of settling with their meal, Appalachia's deadly ticks will spray it back at their foe, causing radiation damage and having a chance at transmitting the parasite's disease. So not only are they sucking your blood, they're weaponizing it and flinging it right back at you. Of all the creatures on today's list, the ticks are one of the deadliest. And they definitely win the prize for being the creepiest. Ugh, they just gross me out. Beavers Now, of course, sometimes latent radiation doesn't cause creatures to grow too much in size. That is the case of the beaver. What was once a great symbol of Canada has undergone some other changes instead. Rather than morphing to be the size of a horse, the beavers around Appalachia have lost much of their fur and have grown cartilaginous spikes from their rear and tail. And while I'm sure such a tail could do a wee bit of damage, it has become purely a defensive mechanism. Beavers will flee if approached by other hostile creatures. This won't be the first non-hostile creature on this list, by the way. Bloatflies Next, we have another creature that is quite disgusting. Those who have seen my bloatfly video from a while back know what I mean. Found in almost every corner of the wasteland, the bloatfly, a relative of the pre-war horsefly, has undergone significant mutations due to radiation exposure and the harsh post-apocalyptic environment. Measuring quite a few degrees larger than their pre-war counterpart, I'd wager that a typical bloatfly is about the size of a house cat. And like a house cat has its claws, the bloatfly has its projectile stinger. One is definitely scarier than the other. Upon detecting a potential threat, the bloatfly positions itself towards its target and brings its stinger forward, launching its barbed larvae. These larvae then attach onto the target and inject them with a neurotoxin that causes localized necrosis or decay. While bloatflies may seem harmless like typical pre-war flies, thanks to their swarming nature, erratic flight patterns, and toxic projectiles, they have the potential to pose a significant threat to unsuspecting or unprepared wastelanders. Still, thanks to their abundance, many wasteland settlements rely on bloatflies to survive, using their meat to sustain their populations. While small, the bloatflies' unique adaptations and defensive mechanisms have allowed them to thrive in post-apocalyptic America. Possums the Virginia possum is a nocturnal marsupial best known for feigning death when threatened. I kinda wish they would remain dead, because following the Great War they have become mutated freaks of nature that should not exist. While possums exhibit no change in size between pre-war and post-war, like the beaver, they have undergone quite a few other mutations. For starters, post-war possums now have multiple heads, ensuring they have that full view in case of any predators. Next, for one reason or another, they've grown a second tail. They also have two sets of front legs and maintain their webbed hind legs, giving these possums a total of six legs. Does that make them now an insect? I don't think so, but it's a good question to ask. And lastly, complementing their ragged fur are various other limbs and appendages that stick out. When these opossums look at me with their three heads and six eyes, I can't help but feel sorry for them. Surely that's not a pleasant existence. Cats 
As we get smaller and smaller on this list, the creatures tend to get less hostile. This is typically because they tend to lack effective defense mechanisms or aren't natural predators. Or in the case of cats, they've since been domesticated by humans, meaning that they don't need to take care of their own needs, as their human caretakers will do it for them. What was thought to be extinct by some, the common house cat has managed to survive the Great War without undergoing any notable changes. Uniform fur, four legs, two ears, and one tail. Unlike many other creatures in the wasteland, the cat managed to keep its appearance and role in society intact. Humans across post-apocalyptic America would continue to domesticate cats and take them in as pets. Still, in the aftermath of the Great War, in order to survive, some resorted to hunting cats for food. In New California, the Anarchic Den settlement underwent a famine in the early 23rd century. This led to a localized extinction event, resulting in cats being absent in certain areas along the west coast. Centuries after the world was torn asunder, cats have found their role in life mostly unchanged. They serve as the furry companions to the humans that manage to survive. And I mean, their existence could be worse. They could be an opossum. Chickens Found on the island and across Appalachia are the rad chickens. Derived from the once common domestic chicken, rad chickens are the result of extensive radiation exposure. While size-wise they haven't changed a whole lot, in fact they might actually be smaller than their pre-war counterparts. What's interesting is that years of radiation exposure has caused these rad chickens to lose all of their feathers, rendering them naked and unable to fly. With not much else to do, these chickens are left to roam the wastes, waiting to be feasted upon by some greater predator. Still, their prevalence in Appalachia and Far Harbor indicate that these rad chickens have found their place in the wasteland's food chain, perhaps feeding on earthworms, radworms, earth radworms? I don't know if they exist, but these chickens have to be eating something, right? Anyway, like the chickens of old, Rad chickens serve as an easily accessible protein source for many wasteland survivors. Tastes like chicken. Ants. Oh yippee, another aggressive creature. So the Fallout franchise has had quite a few variations of ant. There's the giant ants from Fallout 2, but there's also the even bigger giant fire ants from Fallout 3, and the giant ants from New Vegas. They're all giant. However, Fallout 4's Nuka World and Fallout 76 brought us the ever-plain ant. No more giant prefixes. And while they may not be giant as in the size of a wolf, they're still much too large for my liking. Following the Great War, the ants around Nuka World and Appalachia did grow in size thanks to latent radiation, just not nearly as much as their Capital Wasteland or Mojave counterparts. Still, these ants are a few magnitudes larger than their pre-war counterparts, coming in at about the size of a radroach. Still, like the common ants that we are familiar with, these larger ants congregate in colonies with defined roles. Forager ants hang around nests and perform traditional gather rules, while soldier ants act as defenders of the colony, keeping any potential threats at bay. These ants can also be found flying in swarms, swiftly handling anything that may pose a threat to the colony. While these ants are quite small, their swarming nature does pose a threat for most wastelanders. Best bring your biggest can of raid. Frogs So Fallout 76 has the Rad Toad, a massive mutated toad that belongs nowhere on this list. But it also has your standard frog, and the frog is quite small, so here it is. It would seem that the frogs found in Appalachia got into something mighty strange following the Great War. I'm not sure if it was radiation or something else, but the mutations that frogs underwent are quite uncommon. So, as stated, the frogs stayed relatively small. They of course did grow, but not to a monstrous size like most creatures. But where they lose in size, they make up for in front leg size. The frog's forelimbs are quite large relative to the rest of its body. Probably could get quite a bit of meat off those bad boys. They have also grown what appear to be sharp quills out of their torso, 
and most peculiar of all, some appeared to cackle with a sort of bluish energy, almost like they were bathed in Nuka-Cola Quantum. It's quite strange. Still, despite these changes, the Appalachian Frog is both non-hostile and has very few hit points. Unlike its rad-toed counterpart, the frog is not a threat to wastelanders. Mantis Nymphs So Fallout, Fallout 2, and Fallout New Vegas have all featured giant praying mantises as common creatures to be found across the western wasteland. These mantises, I had to google the plural of mantis by the way, are too big to make this list. But New Vegas added an early game variant of the giant mantis, the giant mantis nymph. These tiny mantises are the offspring of giant mantises. And they are quite small, I'd estimate them to be smaller than a cat, maybe rat sized or something. As such, they can sometimes be killed in New Vegas just by stepping on them. The most hit points any variant of the mantis nymph can have is 15. So yeah, they're quite squishy. Definitely not a threat for most wastelanders. Just heed my one warning, usually seeing mantis nymphs means that some giant mantises are nearby, and you probably don't want to mess with those. Mantis nymph good, giant mantis bad. Fireflies. This is one of my favorite creatures in Fallout, I'm not sure why, probably just because real life fireflies are cool, so their enlarged Fallout version is doubly cool. I don't know. Found in small groups across Appalachia, fireflies have grown quite a bit since pre-war. The largest fireflies once grew up to 1 inch long, but now, post-war, I'd probably estimate that they're the size of a small bird. With no overt defense mechanisms, when a threat is perceived, they will fly away. While they're not very mighty and don't offer much in terms of loot, they add plenty of flavor to the already rich world of Fallout. Owlets While Fallout has yet to add an owl-like creature, Appalachia is home to their young. The Owlet is a baby owl that doesn't do a whole lot. Latent radiation following the Great War has caused these Owlets to lose all their feathers, and with it, their ability to fly. Forced to the ground, they hop rather fast to avoid predators. They're also pretty useless, but one can use their meat to cook up some Owlet nuggets and get a small boost to intelligence. So that's kinda nice. Radgulls Perhaps one of the most annoying pre-war creatures has managed to survive nuclear devastation. The Radgull, a descendant of the pre-war seagull, is a seabird typically found near bodies of water. As such, they can most commonly be seen around the Boston Harbor or on the island. While some birds that we've mentioned today like the chicken and owlet have lost their ability to fly, the Radgull maintains theirs. It seems like the only true difference between the pre-war seagull and the radgull is the blistering skin. That probably doesn't feel too nice. Rad Rabbits Rad rabbits are rabbits that have been affected by radiation. It's in the name. The aftermath of the Great War caused the rabbit population to lose much of their fur and grow boils and warts across their skin. While the mutations of some creatures have caused a food chain mix-up, like flies becoming predators, the rad rabbit has kept its place in the animal kingdom. It is prey. It will always be prey. Radiation didn't give it some projectile spikes out of its back, just some cosmetic mishaps. As such, when hunted, they will rapidly flee. I like the rabbit on the perk art for Animal Friend better. Ravens and Crows of all the creatures mentioned today, the only one to not show any signs of being affected by radiation are the black birds. Called ravens in New Vegas, called crows in Fallout 4, these black birds demonstrate similar behaviors between the two games. They are non-hostile, can't be targeted in bats, will typically fly away if one gets too close, and shooting them causes them to explode. While the names between the two games do differ, the appearance and behavior remains the same. But, I don't know, maybe I'm just bad at telling birds apart. Squirrels Found in Appalachia, the squirrel looks simultaneously funny and creepy. The Great War wasn't too kind to the squirrel population. They've maintained their small size, but have lost much of their fur. Their eyes have become yellowish bulbs, 
and they have splotchy growths across their body. The Great War also didn't bestow any crazy defense mechanisms to these squirrels, rendering them quite weak in combat encounters. The best they can do is scurry away. Rumor is, when roasted on a stick or in a stew, they taste quite good. Bee Swarms To round out this list, the smallest killable creature in Fallout is the Bee Swarm. While the Great War didn't seem to affect the appearance of these bees, it may have affected their behavior. Composed of many small bees, bee swarms are extremely aggressive, relentlessly defending their hives to the death. Besides their aggressive nature, they're kinda just bees. But it's like a lot of bees, so it is quite scary. And that concludes our little foray into exploring Fallout's smallest creatures. From the bloat fly to the bee, some of the most terrifying creatures are the smallest, but from the house cat to the owlet, some of these smallest creatures are also the most timid. Suffice to say, size isn't always the best indicator of strength, especially in the wasteland. But that's all from me today folks, if you liked the video be sure to share and subscribe, join the discord, have a good rest of your day, cheers.